Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Sultai Colored Kicker Synergy deck, which features some pretty awesome cards from Zendikar Rising, including Verazol, the Split Current, X a blue and a green for a legendary creature, Serpent, and Verazol enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each mana spent to cast it, and then late in the game, whenever we cast a kicked spell, we can remove two plus one plus one counters from Verazol, and if we do, we can copy that spell and choose new targets for the copy, so Verazol is a perfect curve filler, even fine to just play it for 2 mana as we still get a 2-2 Verazol that can remove 2 counters to copy a kicked spell, and then that sets up some pretty awesome plays in the late game, letting us double up on our various kicker cards, and there's no shortage of kicker cards as you'll see, and one of the main win conditions even has kicker as it's Roost of Drakes, a 1 mana enchantment with kicker for 2 and a blue, and when Roost of Drakes enters a battlefield if it was kicked we get to make a 2-2 blue drake creature token with flying, and then whenever we cast a kicked spell we get to make a 2-2 token as well so we've got the flexibility of playing it for one mana or playing it for four mana and getting a token right away and then the one mana enchantment is just very difficult for a lot of decks to interact with which makes it a very resilient win condition and then as you'll take a look here, we only have the one black card in the deck, which is Blood Chief's Thirst, giving us access to some cheap removal, destroying a creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost 2 or less, but we can also kick it for 2 and a black, in which case we can destroy any creature or planeswalker instead, and playing black isn't too much of a stretch in this deck, since we kind of wanted to play Zagoth Triumph anyway, just for the blue-green fixing, but we just get a third color for free, and then adding Fabled Passage and a couple swamps makes it pretty easy to splash for Blood Chief's Thirst, and then of course we also have the Clearwater Path, way which gives us access to black mana if needed so at the center of the deck it's definitely a blue green deck just splashing a little bit of black for blood chief's thirst giving us a bit of removal which otherwise blue green doesn't have a ton of access to so let's take a look at the rest of the deck at one mana we also have two copies of opt just as a cheap cantrip letting us scry one and draw a card the main reason we're playing opt is that it synergizes nicely with seagate stormcaller which requires us to have lots of cheap instants and sorceries to copy then of course our four copies of Rooster Drakes for Blood Chief's Thirst, and then two Reclaim the Wastes, which also helps us with the mana fixing, so that's why we have a relatively low land count, but Reclaim the Wastes essentially counts as a land as long as we can produce green mana to cast it in the first place, and then later in the game we can cast it with Kicker, enabling some Kicker synergies potentially, and letting us grab a second land. Then at two mana, besides Verosol, we also have the full play set of Vine Gecko, a two mana 2-2, two -two, saying the first kicked spell we cast each turn costs one mana less to cast, and whenever we cast a kicked spell we can put a plus one plus one counter on Vine Gecko. So Vine Gecko allows us to potentially cast a turn three kick to Rooster Drakes and plenty of other kicked spells on turn three so it definitely helps us speed up the deck and also applies quite a bit of pressure as a 2-2 that keeps picking up plus one plus one counters. Then we've got some interaction with Inscription of Abundance, a 2 mana instant, with plenty of different modes between putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on a creature, letting us gain life, or letting a creature we control fight an opposing creature, and we can also play it with Kicker, in which case we get to choose all three modes at once, making it a very powerful spell, especially if we can get the discount from a card like Vine Gecko. Then we've got two copies of Seagate Stormcaller, a 2 mana 2 1, that when it enters the battlefield lets us copy the next instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost 2 or less, we cast this turn, and we can choose new targets for the copy, and the Stormcaller itself also has Kicker for 4 and a blue, in which case we get to copy the spell twice, although for 7 mana total to kick it, it's going to be quite pricey. And then we also have the full play set of Into the Royal as a nice interactive spell. For one on a blue, we can return target a non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and we can also kick it for one on a blue, in which case we get to draw a card as well. So perfect to go alongside our Vine Gecko to maybe bounce something on turn three and draw a card. Then at three mana, we've got two copies of Coral Helm Chronicler, a 2-2 that when it enters the battlefield, lets us take a look at the top five cards of our library, and we can reveal a card with a kicker ability from among them and put it into our hand. And then whenever we cast a kicked spell, we get to draw a card and then discard a card so it gives us a nice bit of card selection as well. We've got two copies of Jace Mirror Mage, which we can play kicked for an additional two mana, in which case we get a token that's a copy of Jace that starts out at one loyalty, then the plus one lets us scry two, and the zero ability lets us draw a card and reveal it, and we remove a number of loyalty counters from Jace equal to that card's converted mana cost, so that also synergizes nicely with our kicker cards, because the converted mana costs of our cards are quite low, especially looking at a card like Roost of Drakes or Blood Chief's Thirst, which only costs one mana, but still have a lot of utility in the late game, so Jace doesn't lose a ton of loyalty using the zero ability and of course if we reveal a land that doesn't remove any loyalty whatsoever so Jace makes for a nice card draw engine in the deck 
And then we have two copies of Morassa Sproutling, a 3-mana 3-3 that we can play with Kicker for one and a green, in which case we can return a card with the Kicker ability from our graveyard to our hand, so another nice grindy card advantage card. And then topping off our curve, we've got two copies of Vastwood Surge, which lets us search our library for two basic land cards to put on the battlefield tapped, but it also has Kicker for four mana, in which case we can put two plus Omposwan counters on each creature we control, so that's especially nice with our Rooster Drakes, as we first get the Drake token and then get to put two plus Omposwan counters on it, and then we also have two copies of Inscription of Insight, which can provide a bit of card advantage, letting us scry to and then draw two cards. We can also use it to bounce two creatures, or we can make an XX Blue Illusion creature token where X is the number of cards in our hand. And then we can also play it with Kicker for two and double blue if we've got a ton of mana in the late game. And then going over the mana base, we do need a lot of basic lands because we have both Vastwood Surge and Reclaim the Waste searching for basics, as well as four copies of Fabled Passage. So we've got four islands, two swamps, and four forests. Then four of the blue black pathway helping us cast Blood Chief's Thirst, but for the most part just going to be played as a blue source since we do need double blue for cards like Jace, Into the Royal, and Rooster Drakes. And then four of the Zagoth Triome, which we can also cycle, and one copy of Throne of Makindi, just so we don't get any comments in the comment section asking about it. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, especially if we find another untapped land. Then we can maybe go turn three Chronicler into a kicker card on turn four. All right, nice. Forest is good. A Rune Crab, perfect target for Blood Chief's Thirst, opponent on a blue black mill deck. So they milled Stormcaller and Inscription. So I can reclaim the waste plus thirst. I'm gonna think about what land to get. Probably just an island. So yeah, we'll thirst. Opponent does have a response here, so they're probably holding the one mana rogue, is my guess. Could also save for reclaim the waste to play it with kicker later. Don't think that's gonna be necessary. And yep, there's the Thieves Guild Enforcer. So your opponent's not playing Lurus as companion, which probably means they have Zareth San in their deck. Which is gonna be kinda scary. Alright, time for Chronicler. Hope it doesn't get countered, because we're pretty light on action here. It resolves. And then just want to find any card with Kicker written on it. Heartless Act kills Chronicler. And that turns on Enforcer, but a Rusa Drakes is perfect. If we can resolve it. So no Zareth this turn. And Call of the Death Waller gets back Ruin Crab. Alright, at least I get to resolve Rusa Drakes, which is pretty key. And Sproutling is looking quite good as well. So I think this is the priority. And then next turn, I can think about dealing with the opponent's creatures. They've got a second Enforcer, maybe. What other one mana black instance could they have? Can't think of too many. Blood Chief's Thirst kills a Drake, that's a sorcery. I guess it could be the dual-faced card for one mana that can save a creature. And yep, there it is, Malachi Rebirth. If they did decide to play it just to mill with the crab, or they want to play something expensive just to take inventory. So my opponent stopped decking, and my hand's quite good here, so don't hate my chances. This turn probably want to play Kicked Sproutling. Do we have a second Sproutling in the graveyard? Nope, we don't. That's also a nice loop in these grindy matchups. So I can get Jace, another Roost. Kind of like getting another Roost, to be honest. So I should maybe fetch before I run out of basic lands. Sproutling 
get back Roost. And then we've got two removal spells to take care of the opponent's creatures. Still only halfway our library. Alright, Tutelage might change that pretty quickly. Don't have any great answers for Tutelage other than Into the Royal to just bounce it temporarily. But as long as they don't find an Into the Story, we should be fine. So this seems like a good turn to kill some of the opponent's stuff. So how about... Let's see, I can play Kicked Roost and Thirsts. Yeah, it's probably fine, and then we'll leave the Crab in play for now. And just kill the Enforcer, so the Sproutling can attack. And next turn we can maybe fight a Crab. So we're in pretty good shape. But again, if my opponent finds an end to the story, a second frantic inventory, we could still be in trouble. Not too afraid of the crab itself, since we're still with 26 cards in library. Opponent's gonna pass. Vast would surge. One mana short of casting it with kicker. So that can maybe end the game. So for now we'll attack and then just keep up my instance. Might decide to kill the crab. Aha, uh -huh, they're the Thought Thief. But yeah, the inscription's gonna be bad news for them. As we get to play it with Kicker. And then put two counters here. And then we'll gain the life and I guess we can fight the crab. Death touch doesn't matter if it has zero power. So our opponent's entire board disintegrates. Falls to eight. I've got Into the Royal available to maybe bounce my Sproutling just in case. Although at this point my opponent needs like an extinction event to deal with all the drakes into some card draw to enable the tutelage. So it's pretty unlikely. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn two Gecko, turn three maybe Stormcaller into double opt. And then try and find some more kicker cards we can play with a Vine Gecko and then Inscription another way to refuel. Opponent on a green-white ramp deck. So probably don't need more lands for the foreseeable future, so we can bottom those with Opt. Glass Casket, gonna deal with Gecko. Luckily it doesn't mess with my plan of playing Stormcaller and Opt here. And a Gilded Goose. Alright, so my opponent's ramping into something big. Roos would have been nice with Gecko, since I could have played it this turn already with Kicker. But uh, still pretty happy with Stormcaller into Opts. And then I'll wait as long as possible to decide which colors to grab with my Fable Passage and how to play my Pathway. Into the Royal seems fine. So maybe next turn kicked Roost and then kicked into the Royal afterwards. Can maybe bounce whatever they're trying to ramp into. Another casket, that's fine. Don't really care about my Stormcaller all that much. Possible they're playing a Yorion deck. And then they can flicker casket to get rid of my Drake tokens. And casket is a pretty good answer to tokens if you can keep flickering it. But of course then we would get our other creatures back. So for now, I can probably just play my pathway. Since we put some lands on the bottom that we don't want to shuffle back. Play Kicked Roosts. If I maybe find a Coral Helm Chronicler, I can discard Fable Passages as well. Ooh, Turn Timber Symbiosis. Let's see what it finds. Yorion, and yep, that's what we expected. 
So we can flicker the goose and maybe casket as well. They might give me my Stormcaller back, but decline to give me the Gecko. Alright, they decide to leave both caskets as is. Fair enough. Sproutling could be pretty nice, getting back a card from the graveyard. So you can maybe recycle my Into the Royal. For now... Don't really need to bounce anything. Could just play Inscription and go digging. And then, do I want another Into the Royal? Probably don't need it. Alright, Thirst can maybe kill Yuriel next turn. Don't feel the need to kill the Goose. So our opponent's got two cards in hand. We definitely have the card advantage going in our favor here. But my opponent could have some more heavy hitters. They're looking at their graveyard too. Decides to pass. Alright, Drake can attack. And then I'll probably just uh, kill Yurion. Could also decide to run out Verazol as a 2-2. Which is fair, because then Sproutling can get back two things on the following turn, maybe. Sure, let's go for it. Can get back my Inscription and my Thirsts. Which is going to be pretty sweet. Opponent starts sacking food to gain three, which is usually not where they want to be. All right, Elspeth conquers death. Doesn't conquer anything here since Roos is one converted mana cost and Verazol is two. But can eventually get back a Yurion from the graveyard, so that's why they did it. But uh, yeah, Kicked's Sproutling looks pretty good. I guess it's time to fetch at long last. Probably want to attack first, so we get some more damage in with Verazol before we sacrifice it. So one Sproutling gets back Inscription, the other one gets back Thirst. And we get to pass with Into the Royal at the ready. Although I guess it's going to cost me two more now. Yeah, that's fine. So I won't get to bounce anything, but don't really have to. And then maybe next turn I can bounce Conqueror's Death. Although then they will get to exile my Sproutling. Alright, they found another Yorion, so it does get to flicker Conqueror's Death to Exile Sproutling, and then Visionary gets to draw an extra card, so pretty good for my opponent here. They can decide to get rid of some of my Drakes if they flicker Caskets. But now we don't have to worry about bouncing Conqueror's Death. My spells are still taxed by the first Elspeth Conqueror's Death. So I think for now I'm just killing Yorion and then... I get to attack with all my Drakes. And Sproutling can attack as well. So I'll have a brief window to cast my Into the Royal for 2 mana if I want to. But don't really see a reason to at the moment. So that's fine. Trail of Crumbs, alright. Opponent found their card draw engine. 
And they do have quite a few food tokens, so yeah, could be bad for me. Next turn we have to deal with Yorion coming back, so I'll probably have to bounce the Conqueror's Death. And the uh, Conqueror's Death tax also makes it more difficult to cast my kicker spells. Otherwise a kicked surge would be pretty nice too. So trail finds a second trail. Yeah, if it weren't for the Conqueror's Death tax, a kicked surge would probably seal the deal. One mana short of a kicked Vastwood Surge. Can I kill my opponent here? I've got four drakes, so that's eight power in the air. So not quite enough to kill here. So yeah, I think we gotta bounce the Conqueror's Death. I guess I can bounce Conqueror's Death in my opponent's upkeep, so my Into the Royal's cheaper. So gotta make sure I put some stops here. Opponent takes it. All the way to one. We'll pass. And then just before Yorion comes back, I can bounce the enchantment. Opponent gonna sack a food to gain three, but they don't have the mana to use trail unless they want to use the goose. But that's gonna cost them another food token, so. It's a bit of a waste, but I guess they're digging for something specific. Yeah, they maybe were better off just like sacking the food to the goose for mana and then getting to use both trails, but maybe they just wanted to gain the life. Alright, so right now Into the Royal isn't taxed anymore, so we can bounce Conqueror's Death and make another Drake. And still have a second into the Royal with Kicker available. Opponent did find a Great Henge with a trail, but it's going to be pretty pricey to play here since I don't have a very big creature in play. Inscription could also come in handy, but I don't think I need to cast it now. So yeah, it took a while for the opponent's deck to get going, but now that all their engines are online with trail, Yorion, Great Henge, we're kind of starting to see their synergies. So yeah, the green-white Yurion deck is quite powerful as well. Luckily, Rusa Drake's dodges Conquer's death nicely. So they're gonna try and play the Great Hand here, maybe. There it is. And then they can still Conqueror's Death, but they're dead on board here. At 6 life, facing an army of Drake tokens. And a fancy thing we can do here is Into the Royal bouncing Glass Casket to get my Stormcaller back, and then I can copy my Inscription of Abundance. just to show off here. And then inscription will just uh, put some counters on stuff. Now when you copy an inscription it does choose the same mode so we can not go plus one counters on one inscription and then fight on the other. Our opponent does have a second goose, so probably should have waited until end step to do this, but that's not gonna change anything. Alright, sweet, managed to beat the green white Yorion onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, turn two gecko into maybe turn three kicked roost.
We'll need to draw another untapped land for that to work. And it needs to make blue mana. So pretty specific. Turn to Cobra. Alright, we'll just have to play a Verazol for now. Passage can grab an island, and next turn we can play Kick Truce Drix and copy it with Verazol. Opponent on a Teamer ramp deck. Dry it so they can play one more land. Potentially play a two drop. So I've got double roost in play. Next turn I can play a kicked into the royal and make two more drakes. Gotta hope my opponent doesn't ramp into an Ugin the Spirit Dragon, which can just wipe away my roosts. Cultivate, so more ramp. So we can potentially still see a 6 mana play. And a Song of Creation, nice. So our opponent's gonna try and combo off, maybe they've got a... Thassa's Oracle to win the game eventually. Evolving Wilds makes extra mana. They had one more land drop thanks to Song of Creation besides the one from Dryad. So, they'll get one more mana from Lotus Cobra, but I think they're out of land drops now. So, they discard their hand. And no escape cards, but they do have Underworld Breach in their deck, which can maybe give them access to their graveyard. Blood Chief's Thirst, also a timely draw. So, I've got a few options. I could bounce the Song of Creation, I can just kill Cobra. Make it less likely my opponent gets to combo off. Yeah, I guess going Gecko into Thirst is fine. Sadly can't Stormcaller into Thirst and kill both creatures. Hope they draw land for the turn. That's fine. And then... Could also decide to bounce dry it with kicker. What happens? I get two counters. One here, one here. So if we get 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, put my point to 3. But then I give them a spell to cast with Song of Creation, which could be bad. So instead, how about I attack? And then just bounce the song itself. If they block my 3-3 Gecko, blocks a 2-2 to play it safe. I think I still bounce here to get to one extra damage. Alright, opponent's got one turn to combo off here. And because I have to replay Song, they're going to be limited to 5 or 6 mana, depending on how many lands they draw, of course. Alright, they found a spell. And it's a Lotus Cobra, so that's going to generate more mana for them. Cultivates. So it could definitely be dead, but opponent needs to draw some pretty good ones off the top. 
maybe another underworld breach so they gain access to their entire graveyard. Another cultivate. But they're out of basic lanes. That's unfortunate. That's maybe what they were checking. So two mana remains and her opponent explodes. All right, opponent with a pretty original Song of Creation combo deck here. And yeah, luckily for us, they missed that one turn on a spell and we were able to apply just enough pressure to kill them. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. So because of the swamp, I can't necessarily play Verazol on turn two, but Vine Gecko is still a fine turn two play. Turn one, Hateful Eidolon. I don't love seeing that. Probably implies that my opponent has some enchantment removal, which can easily take care of Vine Gecko. So I can't really play any creatures until I deal with Eidolon, pretty much. Which Inscription does give me access to. So how do I pull this off? I gotta wait until turn 4 to go Gecko plus Inscription. So for now, we'll just reclaim, get my blue mana sorted, and I guess I might as well play Fable Passage for now. And then I do need double green, so probably gotta grab a forest. Second Eidolon. That's rough. Maybe a different approach is to just try and prevent my creature from dying by putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, but if they have a second enchantment, I just kind of lose on the spot. Could play Chronicler, but it just seems so bad. Could play a 3-3 Verosol, but if they have a Miner's Grasp, that's still quite bad for me. So yeah, I think I just got a pass, which feels bad. Maybe I just gotta cast a Vastwood Surge and try and develop my mana before getting my hands dirty with these Eidolons. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Opponent's not pressuring me too much, at least. Would love to find a Blood Chief's Thirst so I can copy it with Verazol and kill both Eidolons at once. Although they could definitely have a Lurus to recur them. Second vessel. Third vessel. They might also just be waiting to cast their Call of the Death Dweller, which can reanimate Hateful Eidolon as well as Vessel. So there's a pretty fine balance here between killing enough of the opponent's creatures so that if they're holding enchantment removal they don't draw a ton of cards of Eidolon, but also not killing too many of their creatures in case they're holding Call of the Death Dweller or another reanimation spell in case they want to leverage those. So I do have enough mana to play Chronicler and dig for removal, ideally Blood Chief's Thirst, which can maybe kill one Eidolon. So yeah, let's go for it and hope to find removal here. Alright, Blood Chief's Thirst, nice. And then I can still play maybe a 3-3 Verosol, which doesn't die to dead weight. And then if they have a Myers Grasp, they only draw one card. They did have a Myers Grasp for Verosol, unfortunately but at least they're not drawing two cards now. And they Mogus' favor to kill their own Archfiend's Vessel to draw a card, that's nice. And then maybe they can reanimate Vessel, turning it into a 5-5 Demon, so finding a bound spell for the Demon token would be nice, or another Blood Chief's Thirst. So my opponent actively wants to lose Archfiend's Vessel, so they either have another Mogus' favor, or they just want to set up Call of the Death Dweller for next turn. Yeah, I'll block. So it's not another Mogus' favor at least. Sproutling can get back Thirst. So that's not too bad. 
Also, I might want to keep Thirst to kill the demons instead of the Eidolon. Opponent might have run out of enchantment based removal. So. I guess for now I can go Vine Gecko and then kick Inscription to fight Eidolon. And then we keep Sproutling, getting back Thirst. Opponent does have a pretty high life total here, so it's gonna be a long road. Angadim's Awakening gets back Vessel, makes a 5-5. That's okay. Stick to the plan. Could also decide to play, let's see. Yeah, I guess second Gecko is not super helpful right now. And then do I want to keep Triumor Inscription? Inscription is also a great answer to the demon. So I'll probably ditch Gecko and then get back Thirsts. Yeah, that's probably the play. Kill the demon and attack for eight, and then I can even play a kicked inscription next turn, which can bounce any number of demons or draw me some cards. Hagra Mauling kills Chronicler. And their last card is an Acquisitions Expert. They do get to see my entire hand, but both my cards are great. Opponent does have Castle to draw the more cards, so... They're definitely not out of action just yet. Decides to take Jace. Yeah, we'll just Inscription with Kicker here. And then bounce their two creatures. Could also bounce a Sproutling, actually. Maybe that's better. Did I want to attack first then? Yeah, fair enough. So if they top deck all of the Death Dweller, I might regret playing this, because bouncing the demons is great, but We'll just bounce Sproutling to get value, don't really need to bounce Expert. Although it's also not bad, because it kind of makes it awkward for my opponent to use a castle since I need to play Expert first. And then we'll keep Thirsts. And then probably just keep Pathway in hand to discard. And then Sproutling can get back my Inscription too. So we've got a uh, late game covered. Demonic Embrace. Yeah, that's not gonna cut it. So... How do I play this? Can just kill the experts for one mana. Seems pretty good. Hit for nine. And yeah, my opponent's super dead here. Double into the royal to bounce their creatures. They know about Sproutling in hands, which can get back any number of cards. All right, sweet. So yeah, it was pretty scary at the start with those Eidolons. Luckily, my opponent didn't have a ton of enchantment-based removal, and we managed to get there in the end. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable opening hand facing a Lures of the Dream Den deck, so it could be the blue-black mill deck. Just need to find some black mana or a second blue source with opts. It's a good sign if my opponent needs to play Fable Passage turn 1, in case they have Ruined Crab to combo with it. Throne of McKinney actually isn't horrible here. 
because that allows me to play turn three, kicked roost. Opponent on black red, all right. So maybe a sacrifice deck. Intimidator. So, play it with Kicker. Don't have any black mana for Thirst unless I level up my throne first. Archfiend's Vessel. Could also be a party deck, I guess. They've got Warrior, Cleric, now Wizard. So we might see a Zagros in our future. Opponent passes into the Royal. Nice draw. So I'm just going to pass here. And then can play kicked into the Royal if needed. Or can decide to level up my throne to give me access to a kicked Thirst maybe. If we see Zagros we can just bounce it. Deadweight for my Drake. Sure. Combines nicely with her companion. Bounce Intimidator. We'll just eat the vessel. Bone puts Lurus in hand. Alright, things are going well. So Kick Jace is looking good here. And then we'll scry with the one loyalty one. And Land and Gek are both fine. And my point explodes. Alright, that was a quick concession, but yeah. We got both our engines online, Roost to make more tokens, Double Jace to provide card selection and card advantage, and our hand was quite stacked as well, so... Maybe a little bit premature, but we were probably winning this game. So yeah, Sultai Kicker. Not the best deck in standard, but definitely can hold its own against some of the more competitive decks out there. Capable of playing a nice grindy game. Can maybe be a bit weak to the more combo-oriented decks since we don't necessarily have the fastest clock and we don't have any real disruption outside of spot removal and bounce spells. So a ramp deck ramping into an Ugin is going to be an issue for instance. But overall I've been pretty happy with the deck. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.